Hey everyone, I hope you're having a nice week so far. Let me start off by saying thank you for the constant feedback on my videos. I value what everyone has to say, especially if it's helpful for making my builds even stronger, and of course, helping others out there. I want everyone to know that I make these builds purely out of enjoyment for myself, and I play what I find fun in the moment. My playstyle is going to be vastly different from the majority of new players, but if you stick with the game and you practice often, you will see improvements with your games. As of late, I've been enjoying playing a lot more veteran than usual, mostly because I found a very entertaining build that caters to aggression and speed. Starting us off will be my handy Aatrox Mark II Tactical Axe. This weapon has a ton of flavor packed in such a small package, as you can throw together a very swift chain of light combos or satiate your bloodlust with some special action staggers into a heavy strike down. Since our light attacks favor towards targeting enemy weak spots, I took brutal momentum to feed into the damage as well as ignore enemy hit mass. Along with that, I also chose Agile, which is not only an amazing new blessing, but it also refreshes our dodge efficiency whenever we connect to an enemy's weak spot. This grants us tons of potential to earn back dodges in between fighting with our axe, making it extremely simple to maintain our survivability. Oh, and the best part about these blessings is that together they grant us 25% weak spot damage. And of course, since we're going to be fighting at close quarters a majority of the time with this build, I decided to take damage to maniacs and flak armored enemies. So now that our melee weapon is squared away, I really wanted to use another weapon that I had yet to make a build for, that being the double barrel shotgun. While this gun has a low ammo count, it packs a serious punch and is the perfect weapon for this build. I chose to increase my strength a bit more with Death Spitter. It's worth mentioning here that currently this blessing has a bug in its description. It doesn't tell you that it stacks up to 5 times, but as you can see in the video, this icon's image will proc every time I kill somebody at close range, unlocking more power behind each shot. Along with that, I took Terrifying Barrage to suppress all the enemies within 8 meters of any close range kills that we make. This also works wonders against Maniacs and Flag Armored enemies that are moving in packs. It'll outright take them down, or stagger them long enough to finish them off with your Tactical Axe. The reason I chose these weapons in particular is because they work in tandem with each other once you see how my talent tree is structured. But before we get to that, let's talk about our Curios real quick. Since I wanted to mitigate as much damage when fighting in close quarter combat, I went with two Toughness Curio and a Stamina Curios. Within these curios, I took some combat ability regen, stamina regen, and I also have resistance to gunners, bombers, and tox flamers. Since there's a lot of debate on my choices within curios, I always say to play to your strengths and weaknesses. This whole build is revolved around fighting as a frontliner and providing your team with enough suppression so they can pick off threats alongside you. So these were the enemies that I noticed that took me out of the action most of the time. That being said, if you need to take a wound instead of a stamina, go ahead. And if you favor different choices in your perks, by all means experiment for yourself. This is never a definitive way to play, as this is my playstyle. But the only thing I would recommend is tacking on some more toughness, as that will play towards our survivability later on. Let's break down the talent tree so you can see how effective we can be once we activate some of our passive abilities. First off, let's talk about the keystone ability, which I'm sure some of you can guess with the loadout already. I took weapon specialist. The way this works is per melee kill, we can gain up to 10 stacks of range specialist. This will only activate whenever we take out our ranged weapon. Upon activation, we gain 2% ranged attack speed and 33% ranged crit hit chance on our next shot per stack for 5 seconds. And with each range kill we get, we gain melee specialists. This obviously activates whenever we take our melee back out, giving us 15% melee attack speed and 10% dodge and distance speed for 10 seconds. With both of our weapons getting buffed, we can easily take down most threats with each active effect. But with always prepared, we don't have to worry about reloading our weapon within combat. Throughout this video, you'll see me constantly swapping in between big fights to suppress the enemy and to gain a quick shot in the barrel no matter how many stacks I have due to the double barrel only having two shots. And with On Your Toes, we can replenish 20% toughness very quickly as we interchange between melee and range specialist. Just acknowledge that we have a 3 second cooldown window for each, so swapping will replenish any toughness steadily as we fight with both weapons. Seeing as how this build is meant to suppress enemies any way I can, I opted to take smoke grenades to break the line of sight between most enemies and reducing enemy sight range whilst inside of my smoke. And to allow ourselves to sneak behind enemy lines unseen, I took the ability Infiltrate. With this ability we replenish all of our toughness instantly and enter stealth for 8 seconds while also gaining 25% movement speed. This ability can also suppress any nearby enemies whenever I come out of stealth. This alone can obviously open up multiple ways for your team to push in, or it can be used to help a teammate get out of a bad situation, or better yet, even get a revive using stealth. With our combat ability, we also have two modifiers assisting us. Those being for the Emperor, which grants everyone in coherency, including ourselves, a 10% boost in melee and range damage for 5 seconds. 
and with Hunter's Resolve, we gain 50% toughness damage reduction for 10 seconds whenever we leave stealth, securing some of our survivability in any tough scenario. Now since we want to move with the quickness, I chose Close and Kill for my aura ability, which grants everyone on the team a 5% movement speed boost. This is also kind of vital since we also want to maintain enough talent points later on down the tree. To boost our stacks with weapon specialists, we have passives like Agile Engagement, which upon killing an enemy with a melee attack, grants us 25% range damage. And better yet, whenever we do the same with a ranged attack, we gain 25% melee damage. So even if you aren't at max stacks when switching between weapon specialists, the damage boost from this passive will help you out a ton. With Demolition Stockpile, we can allow our teammates to pick up any grenades that we find along the way, and we can keep smoking out gunners as we replenish a nade every 60 seconds. Now I took Desperado for the 10% melee crit hit chance and the 25% melee finesse bonus for our axe. This obviously makes our melee option, which is light and quick, perform even better, tearing through the horde with ease and allowing us to kill elites much, much quicker. Since we're going to be actively moving with this build in between fights, I took Duck and Dive for the 30% stamina gain on avoiding any ranged attacks by dodging, sprinting, or sliding. This means as you slip in and out of combat, you can defend yourself even more. And to help make armored enemies even easier to take down for the whole team, I have Exploit Weakness. This passive applies 10% of brittleness to the target that we're applying a melee crit hit to, and it stacks up to 2 times and lasts for 5 seconds. This is also much easier to proc since we have Desperado granting us more melee crit hit chance on hit. And what makes this even better is that it's effective with our whole team, as the enemy becomes weaker for everyone. With the Talent Iron Will, we gain another 50% reduced toughness damage whenever we're above 75% toughness. This should in theory keep us nice and healthy whenever we're coming out of stealth because of the 50% gain that we get from Hunter's Resolve and the full toughness that we immediately get back from Infiltrate. Now personally, I like the talent Leave No One Behind over taking an additional smoke grenade because it allows us to share our toughness damage reduction with the person that we rescue. This allows them to gain up to 33% toughness damage reduction for 5 seconds keeping them in the fight once we get them up. But not only that, we also gain a 20% revive and assist boost whenever we're moving towards them. And we also gain stun immunity and 20% movement speed giving us plenty of ways to evade attacks while we move in for the save. Since we're going to be swapping in between weapons pretty often, the talent 1 motion grants us 25% swap speed ensuring that we always have our weapon at the ready. And to increase our toughness regen a little bit more, with every kill that we make we gain an additional 5% toughness without for blood. To maintain our critical hits and push up the chances of actually making a critical hit, I took Reciprocity. This gives us a 5% crit hit chance for 8 seconds whenever we make a successful dodge, and it could stack up to 5 times. We will be able to maintain our dodges easily with our Blessing Agile on the Tactical Axe, and dodging is going to happen a lot more often since we're going to be frontlining for our team. Keep in mind we have multiple ways of gaining stamina with this build, so we can use Skirmisher to our advantage. This increases all of our base damage by 5% for 8 seconds after sprinting, and this can also stack up to 5 times. So when one fight is done, scan for enemies and sprint onward to the next group. Tactical Awareness is always a talent that I enjoy picking on the Veterans Tree, as it allows us to use our combat ability more often due to the cooldown that we receive whenever we take down a specialist enemy. This is also why I went with some combat ability regen in my Curios, as we can actually trim down that cooldown even more. Now for the times that we only have one shotgun shell inside of our shotgun, but no enemy to restock it for us, I grab Tactical Reload in the upper part of the tree. This really isn't needed, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't save me in some fights against multiple Ragers. It'll let you reload 25% faster if you have a shell inside of your shotgun, which is great in between resets so you can engage in the next fight a little bit faster. And lastly, I have Trench Fighter Joe for a solid 10% melee attack speed boost. This of course pairs really well with the Tactical Axe, as its speed is what makes it so lethal when fighting in close quarters. Now within the talent tree, there are going to be boosts to critical hit chance, melee damage, movement speed, suppression, toughness, and toughness damage reduction. These boosts all synergize really well with all of our other talents, rounding us off with some serious damage within any close quarter engagement. In all honesty, I've been running this veteran build since the itemization update, mostly because of how fun it's been, and over time, I've gotten very used to the functionality of how great both of these weapons work together. My build excels at using stealth to sneak behind enemy lines and suppress them, closing any gap on control they had on the battlefield. And personally, I hope to see more veterans engage in some CQC action in my future games. Anyways, as usual, I'm going to leave another poll on my channel when this video goes up as to which class you believe deserves another build from yours truly. But until then, thank you for stopping by. My name is Zen, and I hope to see you again real soon. Enjoy the rest of the match, and have a nice weekend, everyone.
Defending the enemy.
from concealment. I got it. 